This broadcast is brought to you by the British Israel Church of God. And greetings, friends. Last Sunday, I woke up like any other Sunday morning, made my breakfast, got my first cup of coffee, and I sat down and I turned on the television set, and lo and behold, there was a program on television called The Key of David, a program that is produced by the Philadelphia Church of God and their president there, uh, Gerald Flurry. And I was watching his program. I said, okay, let's see what he has to say this week. And I was watching his program, and I just couldn't believe my ears, what I was hearing from this man. And I, act, I phoned up Bill Pizzinas, our VP, and I said, Bill, are you watching this? He says, actually, yeah, I'm watching it right now on my television set. And we just couldn't believe what he was saying. He was making these outrageous claims that uh, he wrote the little book of uh, Revelation, the 10th chapter, he says that the little book that you read in Revelation 10 is an addition to the Bible. It's new revelation, new prophecies that would fit right in with the book of Revelation. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe my ears. Now, I know I said that I would leave, that I would stop doing Armstrongism videos. I think I said enough about Armstrongism, but I said to Bill, you know what, I just can't let this go. I'm going to have to write a booklet. I'm going to have to do a video on this particular subject about this little book. And what is the little book? Are there additions to the Bible? You know, a lot of, uh, many others make that same claim. Many other false prophets, Joseph Smith and his Book of Mormon, uh, Muhammad and his Koran, they all claim to be additions to the Bible. But the Bible says that it's closed. It's sealed in Isaiah the 8th chapter. Here in Isaiah the 8th chapter, in verse 16, it says this. It says, bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. The law and the testimony. We read that in the Old Testament. We also read that in the New Testament, especially in the letters to, of, of John, the Apostle John. Verse 18, it says this. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are signs and for wonders in Israel from the eternal of hosts which dwelleth in Zion. So this was a prophecy of Isaiah and his disciples being types of Jesus Christ and his disciples. They were signs and wonders. And it says that this law and testimony was to be sealed among his disciples, among the disciples of Christ. In other words, after Jesus Christ and his disciples, there would be no more Bible. It would be sealed. It would be bound up. And we read of the law and the testimony, the Old Testament and the law, the commandments of God, and the testimony of Jesus Christ in the New Testament, especially in the letters of John and the book of Revelation. Then it says, after this, after it's sealed and bound up, to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, that's the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, it is because there is no light in them. So there are no more additions to the Bible. But Gerald Flurry claims that this little book that he wrote, and I'll give you some quotes uh, from his book called The Little Book, he says that he wrote this little book, and it's an addition to the Bible. Now, why would I need additional information outside of the Bible? The Bible pretty much covers every uh, of what we need to know when it comes to future events. 
The Bible covers everything from all the nations of the world, the, the nations of Israel. It even talks about the prophecies of the church, the apostasy of the church. The church, it has many prophecies about the church in prophecy and so on. Why would I need an addition to the Bible when the Bible gives me all the information I need? Why is there a need for it? Well, there isn't a need for it. The only need is Gerald Flurry and Muhammad and, and Joseph Smith and all the others, what they need is people praising them, recognition, look at me, I'm God's chosen apostle, God's chosen prophet, and I wrote an addition to the Bible, basically. Now, I took, some, I took the video from this particular particular uh, television program and I'm going to show you some clips during the program to show you what these claims are and I will also quote from his book that he wrote the little book to show you that he wrote this little book and uh, it's an addition to the Bible now basically I'm gonna let Gerald Fleury here in this first clip tell you what this little book consists of take a look at this clip now this Little book also talks about a deadly falling away from God's church where they get to the point where they had the message of God to prophesy, then they stopped prophesying, and then God had to raise up a work to prophesy again. The little book tells us all about that. It also leads directly into the Great Tribulation and into the work of the two witnesses. Now, it also goes beyond that to the very return of Jesus Christ. I mean, it's tied to that event. So you can see this is a bittersweet message. All right, so Flurry gives us the basic outline of what the little book consists of, and that is the falling away of the church. Now, why do I need a new book to tell me that when the Bible already tells me that there's going to be a falling away? But there would be a falling away of the church, and that the church would stop prophesying, that's the old worldwide church of God. They had prophecy, and they stopped prophesying. And then he says that God would raise up another work, and they would prophesy again, as he says. And then this book is tied into the Great Tribulation. Now, why do I need another book to tell me about the Great Tribulation? The Bible is replete with prophecies about the Great Tribulation and who it's going to come upon and so on. Why would God give us another book? And then it says that it's tied in with the second coming of Jesus Christ. Again, why another book? When we have the Bible to tell us all about the second coming of Jesus Christ and the book of Revelation. Now, in Revelation, the 10th chapter, I want to show you what it actually says here. Here it talks about verse 1, an angel coming down. And then in verse 2, it says, In his hand had, he had a little book opened. So this little book is opened. And he had his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the earth, meaning that it is a global, this book that is open is, a, is for the whole world. In verse 3 it says, and he cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars. Now does it say the little book, its message uh, is like a lion that roars? No, it says that the mighty angel with a loud voice as when a lion roars, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now I'm going to stop there. I want to show you this clip of Flurry and how he interprets this passage. Take a look at this clip. Notice verse 4. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So here is a message to John the Apostle in the first century. And he said he understood the little book, and he was about to write at least the essence of the message down. He was about to write it down. And God says, No, John, I want you to seal that up. I don't want you to write that, that part of it. He understood something he didn't write, and it was about this little book. He said, yes, uh, I know you understand it, but don't write it down like you're planning to do. Now, why was that John told to do that? Well, it, I think it's rather obvious. 
that he didn't write it down, the, the message or the content of that little book, because there would be another man come on the scene in the end time to write the book. It would be written down, but not at the time of John. Now that is what it implies, and it all will fit into the book of Revelation. In other words, it'll explain Revelation 10 to you, and fit it right into the rest of the book of Revelation. That's what this is about. So where is the written message in this end time? It's supposed to be here. It, it has to be here right now. I can prove that to you. <laughs> right out of your own Bible, I can prove it. Where is it? Where is the written message? Where is the little book that God prophesied would come on the scene? And He gave us a special chapter there in Revelation 10 and 11, really, they're tied together as one vision, but he gave us those so that we could understand about this little book. All right, notice Fleury's twisted theology. Notice how he doesn't read exactly what the scriptures say, but he adds his ideas into the Bible. Notice what it says in verse 3 cried with a loud voice as when a lion roars, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Uh, these seven thunders, did it come from the little book? It doesn't say that, does it? It says that when the angel cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. It's not a message from the little book. These seven thunders are the seven spirits of God that come from the throne of God. It didn't come from the little book. Now, he says this, that the seven thunders are messages from the little book. And let me just quote to you from his book, The Little Book. It says here, Mystery of the Ages did not contain seven thunderous message, messages like a lion's roar. Now, does it say that? That's on page three and four of his book, The Little Book doesn't say that, does it? It says the mighty angel, when he cried, it sounded like a lion's roar. The seven thunders, it didn't come from the little book, did it? It comes from the throne of God. And it says this, and the angel told John not to write this vision of the little book. Did it, does it say that? Does it say that he told John not to write the vision of the little book? No, it says that when the seven thunders uttered their voices, and when the seven thunders uttered their voices, verse 4, I was about to write, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So whatever the seven spirits of God said from the throne of God, John was told not to write it. But according to Fleury's theology, he says here that this little book had seven thunderous messages, and John was told not to write them down, but that this little book would be written later. And who wrote this little book? Well, let me quote to you from his book called The Little Book on page 4. It says this, Imagine, the message of this little book was revealed 1900 years ago. However, it was not written until 1989. Why did God reveal his message 1900 years ago and not record it until the very end? If Mr. Armstrong had understood Malachi's message, which is the little book, he would have warned us about the Judas-type betrayal. So there you have it. Malachi's message, a, a book he wrote, is the end-time little book. And then again it says in page 9 of that same book, and we said before, the little book is Malachi's message, and God commands us to eat it up. So there you have it. His book, called Malachi's Message, is the little book of Revelation 10, and it's an addition to the Bible. Is there any difference between this man and Muhammad of Islam, or Joseph Smith in his Book of Mormon? No, there is no difference. Now, if you want to study this in great detail, I want to offer you this free booklet called What is the Little Book of Revelation, the 10th chapter. You can download it free of charge off our website, BritishIsrael.com.
dot ca and of course we will put the link underneath the youtube player where you can download it from there directly bill pizzinas if you want the hard copy of it bill pizzinas will give you the addresses and phone numbers where you can obtain this free material to get your free literature please write to us at the british israel church of god our canadian address is 7581 jane street suite 201K, Concord, Ontario, Canada, postal code L4K1X3. Our USA address is 171 West Barbara Avenue, Pahrump, Nevada, postal code 89060, or log on to our website at www.britishisrael.ca. Or if you'd like to use it by telephone, Pastor Peter Slemmy's phone number is area code 905-447-4415. Or myself, Bill Petsinas, at area code 416-898-7407. All right, welcome back at that free literature. Log on to our website, britishisrael.ca, and you can download it there absolutely free of charge. All right, there is a reason why... People like Gerald Fleury, Muhammad, Joseph Smith, there is a reason why they write these books and make these outstanding claims. And it's basically they want to tell the world that they are a prophet, they are God's chosen, God's anointed, God's apostle, and whatever title they want to put on themselves. And they want to say, you know, look at me. They want the praise of men, self-exaltation, and so on, and get recognition from everybody that, oh, he's God's chosen apostle. You know, he's, that, he's, he's the man, you know. And if you don't believe me, take a look at this clip from Flurry and let him tell you himself. But this is a mystery that has been revealed to the prophets. See, to the prophets. It's a, God reveals prophecy only to prophets and apostles. You can see that in Ephesians 5, and, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 3 and verse 5. You can read that. So uh, God must be going to reveal this to a prophet. And there will be a voice in this end time, a voice for all of mankind, and a message that is to be proclaimed to all people in this very end time. So there you have from Flurry basically telling you that he is a prophet that God only reveals these things to his prophets and apostles. Now, we've gone through this in another broadcast about the apostles, and that is God, uh, do we have apostles today in God's church? And we show you that the age of the apostles, the age of the prophets, is over. And that the Bible, as I quoted to you from Isaiah the 8th chapter, the Bible is sealed. There is no more Bible, and therefore we don't need any more prophets. And when the Bible speaks about prophets in the New Testament, it speaks of inspired speaking and not really foretelling future events. The age of the prophets is over. The age of the apostles are over, and we don't need any more prophecies. We don't need any more books. The Bible is complete. This is the complete revelation from God, but not according to Flurry. Now, God warns about these uh, false prophets. God says this in John, the first chapter, and verse, first John, rather, the fourth chapter, and verse one. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, put them to the test, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world. Now, as we examine so far, putting Gerald Fleury the, to the test, he fits this as a false prophet because he claims that he has an addition to the Bible when there is no more Bible. And a little later on, or a, a little earlier in the book of Acts, rather, in Acts the 20th chapter, starting verse 28, we see the motive of these people and why they do these things. Take heed to yourself. Take heed, therefore, unto your yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood. That's in Acts, the 20th chapter, verse 28. Verse 29, it says, For I, this I know, 
that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves, people inside the church of God itself, shall men arise speaking perverse things, and there's nothing more perverse than a man adding to the Bible, and I'll get to that in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, to draw away disciples after themselves. And that's exactly what he wants. And in that little book, he actually says that's what he wants. He wants the people from the worldwide church of God, draw them out and bring them into the Philadelphia church of God. So that is his motive. Sex, uh, self-exaltation, praise for men, uh, a following so people can say that he is an anointed of God. Now, God says this, Jesus Christ, in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, he warns John, he gives John this warning to anybody who even attempts to make an addition to the Bible. In verse 18 of Revelation, the 22nd chapter, it says this, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So God warns that anybody that tries to add to his revelation of the Bible, God is going to add to him the plagues that are written in the book of Revelation. So Gerald Flurry is really playing with fire. Now I want to show you this other clip about the Church of God and what he says uh, the little book uh, consists of about the Church of God and the work of God and the apostasy of God. Take a look at this clip. And God said, well, there would have to be a man, frankly, and uh, people who would support that man and that message that would prophesy again. But you see, there was some man before that that prophesied, and then and God's people had the message, and then it stopped. They wouldn't do it. They became Laodicean. That's what the Laodicean era is all about. They all became lukewarm, or at least most of them. That's why it's called the Laodicean era. They wouldn't proclaim God's message. It got so bad that the work of God stopped. And God had to raise up another work, a little remnant that would prophesy again what had been prophesied before and a great deal added to it like the little book. Simply amazing. He is a perfect example of how people try to read into the Bible their own idea babies that they have conceived in their minds and they try and read it into the Bible and they try and make it doctrine. He says that the little book that John was supposed to ingest meant that the little book, uh, the church of God, uh, they didn't prophesy and the work of God stopped. And then God says to prophesy again, as he says. Now notice what it says here. John was to eat the little book, verses 8 and 9 and 10. And he said unto me, you must prophesy again before, I should say concerning, many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. John was to prophesy again. Not the Church of God, not uh, Herbert W. Armstrong and Gerald Flurry. John was supposed to prophesy again, which he started doing in Revelation, the 13th chapter, where it starts the prophecy of the beast. It's not talking about the church and a church split and so on. It's talking about John taking the message of the little book and ingesting it and then prophesying again. Now, when we understand what the little book is, then we can understand the prophecies of John. The little book and the book of Revelation actually complete one another. You cannot understand the prophecies of John without the prophecies of the little book. And we'll get into that a little later on in the program. But basically, Gerald Flurry is adding his narrative, his ideas, into the Bible, 
things that are just not there. Now, before I go on, again, I want to offer you this free booklet. What is the little book of Revelation, the 10th chapter? Free of charge. Download it off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. Take a look at this, and I'll be right back. shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. When? When will the dreams of men become reality? The whole message of Jesus Christ is about a soon coming world government that will bring peace to our troubled world. For a full understanding of this message of hope about the kingdom of God, request your free booklet, What is the Real Gospel? Download your free copy at www.britishisrael.ca. For a free hard copy, call or text your order at 905-447-4415 or 416-898-7407. All right, get that free literature, log on to our website, BritishIsrael.ca, and download it absolutely free of charge. I want to show you one more clip before we get on to what the little book really is. This clip that he says here that people shouldn't spiritualize away things in the Bible, but then he turns around and he starts spiritualizing things away. Take a look at this clip. Now, people can look at that, and they usually look at so many of these scriptures in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, and sort of spiritualize it away. And that's why people don't understand these prophecies. You can't. Now, let me show you how this leads on into Revelation 11. And it's, there should be no chapter break here in Revelation 11, beginning in verse 1. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. And the court which is without the temple, leave out, or cast out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. And the holy city shall they tread underfoot forty and two months. That's Jerusalem and all of Israel, or at least a large portion of Israel, the powerful part of Israel in this end time. But there again, you can see a, a church split. There's an inner court and there's an outer court. Now the inner court is where God dwells, where God dwells. <laughs> I mean, that, that, I don't know how anything could be more exciting than to be where God dwells. But most of God's people are out in the outer court where God doesn't dwell. It doesn't See, they haven't lost their salvation yet, but uh, they're going to have to be punished to bring them back into the inner court where they should have been prophesying again. Or at least helping get that message out. Or if they'd done their job, it wouldn't be necessary to prophesy again. But they failed God. And he says it's about the, he talks about the altar, which is where the ministers serve. And the ministers in, in, this, in this era have failed God, over 99% of them. And he says, you measure them. You use a little book even as a tool to help do that. You measure them and you measure the people. Because we have to get this message out. And he says, rise, as if it could be rouse yourself from sleep. But rise and do this job. Proclaim this message. And it's all dis explained in the little book. All right, notice he spiritualized verses 1 and 2 of Revelation, the 11th chapter, showing that it's not a literal temple, but it means the church of God and about the court and the altar and so on. And that's all just a lot of nonsense. Anybody can see from this passage, and we show you in that booklet, that this means a literal temple. The Bible says that the church is the temple of God, but it says here that there are worshipers in the temple of God. 
them that worship therein. The church is the temple. It says here that there are worshipers in the temple. There are two separate things. This is not a spiritual passage talking about a spiritual temple. It's talking about a literal temple that Jesus spoke of, the Apostle Paul spoke of, John is speaking of here, and it says that Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. It says the holy city shall be tread underfoot forty and two months. Jesus spoke of the same thing in Luke, the 21st chapter. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles till the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. It is speaking of a literal city and a literal temple. And so, I mean, he shouldn't say people shouldn't, we shouldn't spiritualize things away and then turn around and spiritualize things away. I mean, practice what you preach. The Bible shows us what is spiritual and what is not. It actually even tells us what is spiritual and what is not. As it says in the same chapter, Revelation 11, verse 8, I'll show you one example. It says here, their dead bodies shall lie in the city of that in the street of that great city, which is spiritually called Sodom in Egypt, where also our lot, our Lord was crucified. There you have it. The Bible says what is spiritual and what is not, and not, you know, applying our ideas into the Bible. So the Bible absolutely condemns that. So Gerald Flurry shouldn't be spiritualizing things away. So what is the little book? Well, the book of Revelation actually gives us clues and points us towards the little book itself. Notice what it says in Revelation, the 10th chapter. Here we can see some of the clues that it gives us to identify the little book. Notice it says here in verse 2, And he had in his hand a little book opened. Now, Barnes says this in his commentary. It says the fact that it was opened, a little book open. The word used here means properly to open or unclose in respect to what was before fastened or sealed. So this book was previously sealed, but it is now open. Clark's commentary agrees. It says here, the meaning probably some design of God, long concealed, but now was about to be made manifest. So previously, this book was sealed. He told John to prophesy again after he ate the book. So obviously this little book is a book of prophecies. And you compare it with Ezekiel, it's obviously a book of prophecies. Now, the other clue, as it says here in verse 6, he swears by God in heaven, the creator of all things, and he says that there should be time no longer. Now, it says here, Many try to translate it, no more delay, but actually, it should read simply time. The meaning is chronos, and it means time. And it says this, this source, that those that prefer the translation of de delay obscures the direct link linkage that exists between Revelation 10 and the identity of the little book. Then it says here, this cryptic declaration has been variously interpreted. Many expos exposers have understood it to mark the end of time. So when he swears by, by God, it says that it is the time of the end. So there is another clue. Now what book do we know in the Bible itself that is marked for the time of the end and it is the only book that it is sealed till the time of the end. And we see an angel in this little book that swears by God forever in heaven. And then says that the book is sealed but will be revealed in the time of the end. There's only one book in the Bible that fits. And that book is the book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, we see... In, Re in Daniel, the 12th chapter, verse 4, it says this, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. And then a little later on, it says in verse 9, Go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end, and then it will be opened. And this is done by, if you read verse 5 through 9, 
it says that this man, this angel, swore by him that liveth forever, verse 7. It's the same angel as Revelation 10. So here we see the book sealed till the time of the end, swore by the angel to God that these were sealed till the time of the end. Then in Revelation 10 we come and here we see the angel swearing by God in heaven that it is the time of the end and he has a book opened. And that is the book of Daniel. Not an addition to the Bible, but a book already in the Bible that was previously sealed, but it is now open. God sealed that book of Daniel till the time when John came on the scene. And John's book is set in the time of the end. And Daniel's prophecies were opened to John. He ate it up, and then he prophesied again concerning nations, tongues, and peoples and kings. And we read that in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter. Here we see John prophesying about a beast. And you cannot understand this prophecy of John about the beast unless you understand, unless you put the book of Daniel with it. Daniel and John, these two books, complete one another. And you can only understand the prophecies of John when you include the book of Daniel. So the book of Daniel is the little book. Now we kind of skimmed through it here in the Watchman broadcast, but uh, we give you the full details in that booklet, what is the little book of Revelation, the 10th chapter. Get it absolutely free of charge. This is Peter Salemi saying goodbye, friends, and I'll see you here next time on the Watchman program.